So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce everyone, the CEO, co-founder of Lean On We, Ron Gold. Zach, my eyes, uh, you have to move this, oh, it's not very good, move it back, <coughs> well I guess not, never mind, okay, anyway, I was, uh, I was on, my ride, on my way back, my eyes were on Zach's rear wheel, and then out of nowhere, on a quiet country road, comes an SUV. I don't know how a woman falls asleep on a Saturday afternoon. And she came into me head on. And uh, Zach suffered a broken hip, months of rehab, and she nearly killed me. Um, I think about that moment every day. And I know that I'm going to think about it for the rest of my life. I don't remember a lot. From, from the time after it happened. In the, in the almost two months that I was in ICU, the, one of the only things I do remember is my neurosurgeon doctor, Human Azmi, coming in to tell me that I'd never walk again. And he had to come in three more times before it would really sink in. Once I was transferred to Kessler, for rehab, I went to sleep every night hoping that when I woke up, everything would be as it had been before. I did that every night and every morning. It was the same result. Nothing had changed. Um, and I would like to change what happened, but there isn't anything I can do about it. At first, when I came home, the magnitude of what had happened prevented me from moving on with my life. It was difficult to let the anger go. Why me? Zach and I weren't doing anything wrong. I credit my three girls, mm -hmm. Stephanie, Jacqueline, and Alexandra, Stephanie, Alexandra, and Jacqueline, not to do it out of order, <laughs> <laughs> at least I didn't forget it, <laughs> that would have been worse. <laughs> along with Betsy, for providing the support and the encouragement to move on. All of them channeled their inner, their inner Betsy, to get, to, I mean to encourage me <laughs> to move on figure out what my new life would be. 
It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Next to standing up here right now. <laughs> Some people have said that I'm an inspiration. I don't feel like I'm an inspiration. I'm just trying to move on with my life the best way I can. And if that inspires people, well then that's fine. I've always had an inner drive to succeed. This was true in most things that I did, and particularly it carried over onto my career at Wall Street. From the ashes of the Lehman bankruptcy, I built an Asian sales desk from scratch for Barclays. How could I get that attitude, how could I get that drive, and how could I get that purpose back? At the same time, Betsy and I were wrestling with the problem of getting care at home. Insurance covered my care through an agency for a short term. But when that coverage ran out, we had to pick it up, and we were on our own, out of pocket. And it was expensive. At that point, what we really wanted to do was hire a caregiver privately. We figured it'd be cheaper, we'd get to choose who we want, and we'd have the control over scheduling without a middleman. So we would benefit by paying less, and the caregiver would benefit by paying more. When we asked around and spoke to others, we realized that many had encountered the same problem. Most people, when they want to hire privately, end up getting a recommendation of a neighbor's friend's aunt that they used a year or two ago, who may or may not be the right person for you and may not fill, fill the needs that you have. If that doesn't work, they go to an agency. If that doesn't work, they put an ad in Craigslist. We didn't think that was a very good idea. It seemed silly to us that there wasn't a better way to go about finding a caregiver who wants to work privately. But there really wasn't. The more we thought about it, the more we realized that this was a huge problem to address. And it was only going to get bigger as we, as we aged and people needed more care. If we could figure out how to transform the way Americans find the right caregiver, then we really might have something. We relied on the experience of the caregivers we knew well. Uh, Linda Scott was my wonderful caregiver to this day, and Godwin Badu, who cared for my dad. And we, we had them help us understand the industry and um, what it would take to create a company that would, that would work well for the caregivers as well. We could create a network of caregivers, a network that we would meet, screen, verify, validate, background check, and then they would enter our website. We'd create a bio, we'd create a video, and we'd upload it all online on a, onto our website. <clears throat> and that is what we have done with the help of a few key people. First, um, Michael Asde, who dropped everything when he heard the idea because he thought it was such a great idea. Second of all, our first employee, Susan Leviskin, <laughs> who is much more than a first employee. That's really the icing on the cake. Susan, Susan has been everything for our family these past three and a half years. Whenever we've needed her, whenever we've needed anything, she was always there without asking. And, um, if I haven't said it enough, or if I haven't said it at all, thank you very much. Thirdly, I want to 
thank Denise Kubera. She, your. Just <laughs> <laughs> a moment. I was looking at the other page. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, who, um, who, who believed so much in the idea that she dropped everything from a uh, hotshot job at Cabrini to join us, for the opportunity to schlep me around to meetings in New York. <laughs> I invite you to learn as much as you can about Lean on We. So many of you have asked over the years how you can help me. Today, you can help by spreading the word about Lean on We. Before I wrap up, I want to thank each of you for allowing me to get to this day. And I know that sounds like hyperbole, but it really isn't. Many of you did so many things that I never even knew about, because I was busy hallucinating in an induced coma. <laughs> You brought food, <clears throat> you gave Alexandra lifts to school and elsewhere, you packed the waiting room at the hospital, and boy did you give blood. You prayed in many different languages <coughs> and many different religions. Just a shout out to Gil Troy in Jerusalem who ran over to the Western Wall when he heard a specific prayer for me there. And many of you filled the courtroom to support us there as well. Um, other people, my sister, Nina and my brother Chuck, picked up the ball to help my parents as my dad was starting dialysis. My siblings-in-law, Ann Cohn, Eileen August, and Raviv Rohn were there to do anything and everything. And, and Stacy, even, even while recovering, um, helping Zach recover, was there to support us every step of the way. And then I also want to mention my, my in-laws, Pauline and Leo August, who at 90 years old moved into our house to help the, the household keep going well, Betsy was caring for me. I know there are others that I will leave out, but I must mention a number of very close friends who not only helped me with support and encouragement, but also helped me think about the concept of building this business. So that would be Steve Greenberg, that would be Mike Rosenberg, Brian Sterling, Brian Berger, Dan Antical, Gardner Senate, Val Andes, Richard Sheldon, Seth Marin and Ann Heyman, and Michael Wilson. As many of you know, there were three phases to my recovery. I, I was told before I started, above all else, make sure you don't fall. <laughs> but my physical therapist said I'd make sure I'm okay. <clears throat> but the recovery could never even have happened if it hadn't been for the smart and quick thinking actions of the first responders, EMT crews, police, and fire. I don't know if any are here. I guess not. Okay, so Zach and I um, have agreed that we're gonna go over there and, and, uh, and meet with them and give them uh, a donation as an appreciation for what they've done. So, as I said, there were three phases to my recovery. The first phase was at, at Hackensack. And of the 47 doctors that I had, um, five are most notable that I want to mention. Dr. Ari Seidenstein, uh, Dr. Bindu Balani, Dr. Frank Ciminello, Dr. Rick Winters, and Dr. Franco Baraci. Well, my sister Nina, who's a, an ER doctor, and Dr. Mark Rubman, uh, a good friend who's also an orthopedist, 
and my cousin, Bill Turner, who I think actually runs Hackensack as far as I can tell, <laughs> and was always there to make sure I was well taken care of. The second phase of my recovery was at Kessler for rehab. I went there for both inpatient and outpatient. Um, I had incredible care there. One person in particular that I wanted to mention was my, my favorite nurse, Martha Tully, who is here. And I know I saw her earlier, so I know she is here. She did so much to help me adjust to my new world. I also had some uh, great physical and occupational therapists, um, both inpatient, particularly outpatient, though. And um, for outpatient, I worked with Buffy Wojciechowski <laughs> uh, and Cindy Granger, amongst others. <laughs> Our third phase was here at the Y, and that is why we are having this party here today. I came here and worked out with Isaac Garlov over there. Isaac has a PhD in anatomy and physiology and prior experience with spinal cord injury. I continue to work with him from my home. And in conjunction with Buffy and Cindy, he was able to, uh, to do wonders to improve both my physical and mental well-being. But most of all, I want to thank Betsy, who's been incredible throughout my entire recovery. She was always there. I mean, always <laughs> there. <laughs> she held everything together. She nursed me back to health. And I have no doubt that without her, I wouldn't be here today. skip the page. <laughs> I'd like to close by introducing my three daughters, Stephanie, Jacqueline, and Alexandra. <laughs> it's because of them that I was able to find my way and find my purpose. I knew how to teach them that no matter, I knew I had to teach them that no matter what happened, no matter what life throws your way. And I pray that you never have to, to deal with the kind of sadness and challenges that I've had to deal with. That no matter what, you have to figure it out. You have to give yourself a plan. You have to find out what it takes to motivate you. And you have to move on. Thank you very much.